Hello friends and welcome to day four of designing an Animal Crossing island in 30 days by just playing the game. We have been doing so well with the resource grind and today is probably one of the most anticipated and favorite days of the early Animal Crossing game where we are going to go villager hunting for our normal, peppy, and lazy. We are also visiting my other island, Lagum, to pick up a couple of DIYs, which are going to be so expensive, as well as Nook Miles tickets, which means we're going to do a Google generator for the number of islands that I can go on before I take the villager on that specific number. So we have a lot of chaos waiting for us, but uh, let's just let's just get into it. I don't think I've ever opened an Animal Crossing game where there's literally nobody. Is Camo Frog visiting today? Is Camo Frog visiting today? I wouldn't know. I've never seen the man. But I'm really excited for the for the hunt because we will be having a bit of a Q&A. Some lovely viewers have left me a few questions that I can answer. I didn't unfortunately have a lot of time because I strive to do these videos and upload them for member same day. So I thank you for the the uh, the questions that I have. And I also needed to remember that it is Independence Day in the United States. So I think a lot of people are off the internet right now. So that's okay. Another fun positive news, Mauricio has its very own museum. Oh yes, it's a grand museum indeed, with separate exhibit rooms for fish, bugs, fossils, and even works of art. I wonder if we're going to get our, our new friend, our cousin as it were, uh, Red, so let's see. I forgot to do this on camera yesterday, but I have been trying really hard to make sure that I take pictures and celebrate the ceremonies of the early game. I think that's really fun to do. It gets a little tedious with every single incline and every single bridge, but at the very least, celebrate the new buildings, your very first incline and bridge. Wait, did I? Is the new bridge up today? Yeah, I think the new bridge is up today. So we have a lot of things to celebrate. All right. So since we all last met, which was yesterday, I did some idle decorating in the interior and we have more money, which is going to be great because uh, the rule that I set for myself was that with every DIY that I get on my other switch, I have to pay the value of the item as it would be sold to Nook's Cranny. So it's going to total a lot of money, like 23,000 bells or something like that. So I just wanted to let you know that I did do the math and it's um, it's gonna be so expensive. Do I even have that on hand right now? Oh, I do. Okay, that's not terrible. That's not terrible. And I think while we're visiting Lagom today, we are also going to visit the stores. I think that is a, a fair thing to do. And yeah, you know what? Let's like do some more idle decorating just to get this out of my inventory. And yesterday I have been thinking of how I'm going to be decorating and terraforming this island. And I have a pretty wacky idea that's going to be extensive and perhaps expensive if I'm going to make this accessible to my villagers, but I'm, I'm hoping that we are able to make the money needed for such an endeavor. It, what's likely going to happen is we're not going to actually have a fully designed town, but really the requirements that we have for this, uh, for this challenge is to have a five-star island. So that doesn't mean it has to be fully decorated. And oh, they got their houses too. Ooh, that is nice. Okay, let's take a look. Let's take a look. We have a nice diagonal bridge action with the plots that we worked on yesterday. And that means we should be having a villager that is crafting. This is actually not one of the worst I've seen. This, this actually suits her coloring really well. 
make yourself at home. I want to chat. Hey, big news. I officially moved from, from the tent life. I got a house. I mean, tents are cool and all, but I can fit way more stuff in a house. Plus, now it finally feels like I actually live here instead of just roughing it. That's awesome. Okay, so maybe they were also paying off their Nook Miles requirements for their tent and it just takes them a couple of days maybe that's what happens and is our boy coach crafting we need to know we are nosy he's not crafting either also this is not terrible either not bad not the flooring i would have chosen but it's not terrible welcome to my top secret hideout guess what i finally own something that even i have trouble lifting yep i can now i now have a house as well it's got walls, a floor, a ceiling. I can finally do jumping jacks without ripping a hole in my home. Well, I mean, you have the horns. You should probably be careful with that anyway. Out of curiosity, is our boy Red visiting? He's not. Okay, well, that probably means he's going to be visiting some other time. And we have, oh my gosh, we have so much to do. I'll worry about this later. We really should go visit, uh, I was about to say Meraki. That is a, that is, a few islands ago we're gonna go visit lagum and get what we need it's presently raining over there so i'm definitely not uh suited for the the weather but that's okay i would like i would like to fly orville i would like to visit somebody on an island and we need to do the 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 legal eagle stuff so just bear with me for a minute obviously just be a kind person don't don't be awful the usual humanitarian thing and we want to do online play and we have more legal eagle stuff be considerate obviously don't cheat what does nintendo consider cheating in animal crossing is it is it order bots and and uh, treasure islands i don't know like how do you cheat in animal crossing I definitely had those sorts of opinions back in the day and I'm glad that I outgrew them because honestly, as I said yesterday, the way you play a game is the way that you play just as long as you are not literally cheating for a competitive game. I want to search for a friend. Oh, hey, first time playing with friends. I've got an app for you. It always, I, every time that I started up a new island, I was not aware that you actually had to say search for a friend or something because i i couldn't figure out what app people were talking about with you know talking with friends or the best friends list so it's always really great to have multiple switches in the household so you can just get that out of the way and i will warn you that i have not been cleaning up my flowers and lagum so it it's it's colorful but i'm trying to think like what has happened since we last did a casually lag them. Oh, I got a new villager. That's right. I got a new villager. Oh, so you'll get to meet my, my new villager. That's really exciting. And as we are doing the flyover, I'm going to just like, I'm going to hold myself accountable and tell you which DIYs that I've picked. I've picked, let's see, the tall garden rock, which is 9,000 bells to sell. Oh my goodness. Then it's the log stool for 480, the plain wooden shop sign for 720, small cardboard boxes 120, cutting board 990, um, western style stone 4,500. Oh, hello, other me. Coconut wall planter 600, angled sign post 600, wild log bench, my favorite item in the game for 960, the stone lion dog for 3,600, and the terrarium for 1,740. So that's going to total uh, three, 23,310. I don't know if I can do anything cheaper than 100 so i think what we're, we're going to do is we're just going to give my other character twenty five thousand because they did do me a kindness by getting all of these nook miles from like naturally i i actually redeemed them from the from the abd if you can believe it okay so we have yeah well let's just do uh let's just do yeah we'll do 25,000 two three four 
and five. I'm I'm so worried whenever my other screen goes dark, like it's going to uh, just kick me out. So here is 25,000. We're going to drop that and we're going to learn all of these. So just bear with me for a minute. And with the last one, I have so much more to work with. I personally feel that the more rustic and natural DIYs can really add something to any island. And so if you are doing something in 30 days and feel very limited, I mean, to be honest, there are no items islands that look incredible. So, I mean, it's just rustic, simple will always be classic and timeless. So now that we have learned all of those DIYs, um, I've given myself permission, like my my resident representative on Lagum has given the resident representative of Madrigio permission to get a couple of fruit trees. And so I think we need pears and we need oranges and we need apples. I don't know if the sister fruit is the same as the fruit that mom gives you. I don't think that's the case. So I've already gotten cherries. Oh my gosh, this is so great. Do you remember like the early days where people just had orchards that if you were really nice and you were polite on their islands, they're like, hey, if you need extra fruit, I I've got you. I started on the next wave of, um, of the flower breeding technique and I think this is okay because we're going to split these and so whatever is the I think this is how this works for flower breeding. I think where if you leave a space that whatever is adjacent in an adjacent square, it'll be fine because I made the mistake when I was trying to do the flower breeding for the purple roses that I just, I didn't have them directly diagonal. I had a space. So I think if I have the red flowers next to the purple, the offspring will be the result of a purple and a red instead of like a red and a red or a purple and a purple. And now let's go see what's at the store. I think there is an upgraded DIY option with Nook's Cranny at its second final form. And <gasps> I need it. I need it. I need it. I probably have it at the other store, but I definitely want this. Mm hmm. Oh, yes. Mm hmm. I didn't even show you all my house yet, so um, after I am done being distracted, I will, uh, I'll show you the house really quickly and we'll go on the hunt because I want to clear as much of my inventory as possible. Is there like a, ooh, that would be really nice in the house. And this would be really cute, the chic wall. Mm, let's get the chic wall to start. And that's a little too yellow, but maybe ooh, the cork flooring would be a really interesting addition. Let's try that one. And what I'm hoping from the Abel sisters is just a pair of glasses, unless there's something super ridiculously cute, in which case I'll probably do I even have the amount of space? I don't even have the space. Oh, no. Oh, but there's cute outfits, though. Ugh, why do you do this to me, game? All right. Just I just want glasses. I just want, you know what, sunglasses, sunglasses are fine. I do like these, but I think we're just going to pick the sunglasses. Sure. Mm-hmm. And no, wait, no, 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 no. We're going to go with the dark ones. There we go. Okay, there. These are prescription sunglasses. There we go. Perfect. Oh, but these clothes are so cute, though. Oh, no. That's all right. I can always come back. And I think the the price that I'm paying to visit islands or visit my other island is that I'll water flowers and oh, we can. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is the new villager home? Is the new villager home? She's not. She's out and about. OK, well, we have a new villager on the island who's been here for a couple of weeks and she took our girl matilda's place and i am enamored if we can find her really quickly then we can go on our merry way okay it's not deirdre although deirdre is looking adorable oh De De deirdre bestie I, I need to get by 
Oh man, this this girl be hiding. This girl be hiding. I don't got time for this. I got to go on a villager hunt. Okay, well, I can't find the girl, but we have Bon Bon on the island. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just, we, we got it. We got to get going. So um, our girl Bon Bon was doing the, the exercising in the rain in resident services. So that's why I couldn't find her because one, she's so ding dang short. And two, I just wasn't paying attention. But yes, I'm really excited for having Bon Bon. She was a really fun edition and i have no regrets she i i like the the peppy bunnies a lot probably a lot of people do but i really like bon bon who is your favorite peppy bunny dotty is a a top favorite for me because of her red eyes and oh can we just like appreciate this house for a minute like beauty and grace but let's change out the the wallpaper and oh that looks so nice put you in storage and what does this look like oh that's so cute yeah it looks like it's being laid out and we're gonna be working on it for later Ooh. oh yeah no no no. i am digging this and then oh for sleepovers for sleepovers we need to have the futon not that way and i just actually you know put it down like that there we go Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. Oh, I love it. This looks so nice. So instantly cozy. And this was made with all of the stuff that I had accrued with the resource grind. So I'm, I'm still okay for the resources for building up everything that I'm going to need. But we should probably get rid of... Hmm. We probably... Well, let's get rid of the extras. and put you in storage i don't have anything as of yet to play music put you in storage we'll move you up here and we will likely need resources for building things right yeah we're gonna be going on resource grinds oh this is going to be intense y'all i'm super excited also super terrified about using the Google generator to pick my villagers. Oh, we don't have any clay either. Okay, so that's going to be a big thing is getting stone, especially since we learned the tall garden rock. And I think that takes what, 90? No, it takes 60 because the, the stone arch takes 90. Yeah, that's ugh. It's going to be so much so much work in in 30 days i feel like i'm going to be scrambling a lot when i unlock three stars and should i worry about this now i probably should not worry about this now we're not going to worry about that now we are going to go villager hunting the the himbo is doing his due diligence of keeping the island safe from all of the of the bugs i had the distinct pleasure of playing hell divers for the first time today and um Ooh, it's stressful, but also really fun and cozy. I did not get motion sickness. So if you are interested in playing games with like four, three or four people, I think it's a team of four. Yeah, it's a team of four. It's it's really fun. It's really fun. But that's not what we're worrying about right now. Right now, what we're worrying about is that. We have three plots. So therefore, there are going to be three hunts and we're just going to do it one at a time. And as we pick each of those personalities, we we then get to worry about who's coming on the island. And personally, I feel it's going to be Vesta, it's going to be Stu, and it's going to be Bubbles. So um, place in your bets of which villager is going to be on these tickets, and we'll see if you're right. Let's generate the first hunt. We're going to pick the villager on island four. Mm, that's not a lot. That's not a lot, y'all. Oh dear. Oh dear. I am kind of okay with shorter hunts though, because it takes me a really long time to get through islands, especially since I like to grind for resources. So this will be a really nice, uh, hopefully brief hunt. Hopefully. All right. So the first ticket 
that we cannot take, which is unfortunate. But I also have a couple of questions from a quick question and answer request I put out to the community while I was doing this. And PC Brian asks, how did I know that I wanted to make YouTube videos, which is an excellent question. And I know that we have more people than ever before who are utilizing YouTube and really just video formats in ways to be creative. It's such a cool medium for doing really just about anything. I used to think that you had to have like a perfectly, whoa, Bamboo Island though. Sorry, we interrupt this, this conversation by Bamboo Island. That is neat. That is cool. Um, e emotional support acts. I did not realize that I would need an umbrella for this, but what I love about just YouTube videos is you can really just do about anything. And I started YouTube be is this Bianca? <gasps> Bianca, my girl, we're not taking you, but hello. I started YouTube because I was very inspired by the other creators at the time in 2020. And I thought that, you know, there are people who just share their, their experiences with gaming. And I figured that I would just approach doing YouTube as a way to naturally as a way to share what I've been working on and as a way to have a form of an artistic medium that wasn't connected to anything medically traumatizing because uh, at the time we were dealing with a lot of just medically traumatic events and you know COVID and so I figured well this will help me stay creative and I was really obsessed with Animal Crossing at the time, like I was getting up before my alarm. It was like Christmas, y'all. I was I was getting up at like 4.35 to just play Animal Crossing before my husband would get up and uh, teach school from, you know, his, his office computer here because we were in lockdown. And so it was a way for me to really focus on just the act of being creative. And once I, I think I finished my first recording and had to take a break, a medical sabbatical, and then I decided to start streaming because I thought it would be more fun for me to just like learn how to talk to absolutely nobody in particular and improve a certain set of skills. And the one thing that I will tell people about starting any creative process, especially when you are going to have a viewership or getting starting with streaming, one of the best tips that I found, I'll put in the description the link of where you can find this specific content creator who really helps raise up other content creators. And the best video that I watched from him was how to stream for a count view of zero and learning to explain what you are doing and just being part of the process and having a really good time and approach any creative thing or any new thing that you're going to do with enjoyment and knowing that you're going to make mistakes, you're going to have pro gamer moments, pro streamer moments, and it's always funny. One of my favorite streams was I was like, I was talking up a storm. I didn't really have anyone. I don't think I had anyone um, watching me at the time. And this person, this random person was like, hey, um, do, did you know that you were muted? And so for the first 10 minutes of the stream, I was muted and I just thought it was the most hilarious thing. And I think that mistake was what really removed this expectation for being perfect or being, you know, curated and polished and just enjoying and having a fun time. So making YouTube videos, I never thought I would actually get back into doing YouTube. I tried it once in 2013, 2014 with um, something about gluten-free stuff because back in the day I was a gluten-free blogger, if you can believe it. I was publishing recipes and doing the stories back when people were like, can we just have the recipe please? Which, you know, it, it is obnoxious as a person who did that thing. So I fully understand, but I, um, 
I didn't think that YouTube was going to be the medium of choice, but it's like any sort of creative outlet that there are so many tutorials that you can learn from. And I personally find a lot of enjoyment in making videos, but you will hit a plateau where you're trying to figure out what your voice is instead of just seeing what other people are doing. And so just like give yourself that that space and grace to learn and to, to try. I can't do Twitch though, because in February of 2024, uh, Twitch had backed out of Korea because um, Korea has a very expensive uh, import rate for, um, yeah, it has a, a very expensive import rate for um, international products and uh, companies. And so Twitch was saying that Korea was its most expensive country to, to be part of and they couldn't really find a good negotiation that suited you know twitch's expenses so i was getting emails saying like you know if you are a twitch streamer just letting you know you can't you, it won't be supported you can't use bits anymore and if i ever decided to do twitch i would have to probably use a vpn or something so that i'm really glad that i stuck with youtube instead of going to twitch because i would have been absolutely heartbroken if i lost all of that work that i had built towards the community that i have now i, I could not imagine not bad for a first haul we have five bamboo shoots i decided to take the shoots instead of bamboo because that would fill up a lot of my inventory so we'll do a quick drop off and then we'll move to island two i'm so nervous I mean, I I know for a fact we're going to be passing up some really cool villagers, but I'm trying to think like, which villager would I like to have? I would always be down to having Eunice come back. I haven't had her since 2021. Really, any of the the sheep except for Vesta would be would be great. Um, I would also just like a Peppy that I've I I really do just want villagers I've never had before. Like, who haven't I had? I don't have it off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure that I've had at least nearly half of all the villagers, I think, at like some point or another, either for three days or 24 hours, according to Willow. Willow was only on my hard mode island for 24 hours before the campsite villager kicked her out. I was so upset. I was so upset. Um, wow, it is really raining. Where, where are you taking me? To the monsoon? To the hurricane? Wilbur, Wilbur, this is, this is, this is not ideal. This is not ideal, but, oh, wait, 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 we need, we need the emotional support axe. I mean, wait, I shouldn't even be worrying about this anyway, because I can't even take them. I can't even take them. Wait, where, hello, wait, hello? Where are you? Where are you? It's Jambet? No way. Oh my gosh. Jambet would be a really fun villager. I've also never had Lily, so I think that would be really fun. She's a she's adorable. I would also love the return of Molly. Molly has always been a really great villager. There was a point where of course, while I'm while I am monologuing, my my shovel breaks, but I've, I've had Molly a couple of times and she has always been great. There was a point that one of the Mollies, like the first Molly I've ever had, was always working out. So I just, I always thought she was either broken or trying to get swole. And I guess while I'm here, should I look for the DIY? We probably don't have one. And we should probably shake trees, do a shaky shake, get uh, the the item in the tree, an office desk, that is nice, definitely need that. Perfect, that's all I was looking for. Perfect. I don't think I need wood right now, right now I want to prioritize getting the, the stone. Because we're definitely lacking in the clay department, I only have 11 clay to my name. I wasn't expecting to meet anyone on this tour, I'm Jen Bet and you're Mori? I'm glad you stepped to talk to me, one thing I love about traveling is the chance to make new friends. Oh, she's so sweet. She is so sweet. What a cutie. 
Although, girl, listen, I'm trying to hit a rock. I'm Stop trying to get me to ask you. It's not your time. It's not your time. I'm so sorry. We are on ticket of three of four. I'm so nervous. We haven't passed up anyone that I'm like super heartbroken, although Jan Bet would have been really fun to to experience. I've had, I think, did I have Bianca for a short time? I don't remember anymore. I think I think she was a Peppy I auto-filled because there were a couple of islands where I just auto-filled the the villagers. I think I just really want either a couple of returning favorites. Molly would be great. Um, who would be a really good lazy? Who would be a good lazy? And w seriously, Wilbur, stop flying into the eye of the storm. Can we have a safe trip, please? I don't like turbulence. But let's see, who is our third villager that we're not taking? Let's see. I was about to be really upset and also very terrified because it looked, it honestly looked like Stu for a hot second, but nope, that's our girl Wendy, I think. It is, oh my gosh. Wendy was on my Yunoya Pirate Kid Core Island, which I'm really proud of, of creating. And uh, she, uh, uh, I'm really sad because people didn't seem to be very interested in participating in the the scavenger hunt for the dream address. So maybe if I'm feeling super motivated, I'll I'll share the the dream address because a couple of people have asked me a complete list of all of the dream addresses that I have ever done or have seen through. So maybe I'll do it that way. Yeah. So if you ever visit Yonoya, let me know what you think. It was my first attempt at kid core and pirate kid core was such an it was such a fun idea i was very proud of the it was like there was the cardboard crew and then there was the tree house no there was there was like three factions there was the peer group haha -ha. uh the i think it was the tree house trio and then it was the cardboard crew i think the cardboard castle crew and it had, uh, let me see if I can remember the villagers. It had Rod, Wendy, Faith. Um, who was the normal on that one? I know we had Kid, Murphy, Mallory. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. We had Wendy. And um, I could have sworn, who else did we have? Oh, we had Hopper. Okay. Yeah, because I, I liked the idea of uh, a sapient inflatable balloon being part of that. Who was the normal? Who was the normal? It's the last ticket. We have to take this villager. And the way that I'm going to um, focus on something other than my growing panic is I'm going to answer the question by Kina. And can you explain the stew beef? I am new to that. First and foremost, excellent pun. So uh, let me think. I believe it was 2021. It's an on. It's an ongoing drama, Kina. Let me tell you. I had been going villager hunting. That was the big thing in 2021. Was like hunting for your dreamies and seeing how long it would take you. I don't have the patience for that. So whenever I was going villager hunting, I kid you not, on two switches, Stu showed up every single villager hunt and i'm talking every single villager hunt there's nothing wrong with the man he's fine but he just he became the artsy gamer stalker and that's not a, a good vibe to have because i fight back so i just it became this whole meme that when i was hunting for a villager like a blue villager for uh Yunoya back when it was a dreamscape idea I got the stew challenge, a super chat where for, I think it was $5, I would use five Nook Miles tickets. And if stew was within those five, oh gosh, hold on. If stew was within those five and oh, I see a sheep. I see a sheep. 
I see a sheep. It's my girl, Stella. Oh my goodness. Best blessed. Okay, I'm feeling a lot better. So, I uh, when I was hunting for a villager, uh, the stew challenge went live. And if you don't know what that is, basically when you go villager hunting, if you get a super chat for $5 for the next five tickets, if that villager is on one of those islands before the one that you're searching for, you have to take them. And so not only did a mod, Scott, and another streamer friend, Kato, do super chats, he showed up on the second ticket and I had to take him. I had to take him and I was just so upset. And But you know, he, he grew on me and I was able to have him on Lagum for a bit. I'm really glad that he got to be on that experience, but for the most part, he's he's not my favorite villager. He's really not. He's a he's a great villager though. I think he's hilarious. He's definitely one of those lazies that have boundaries, which is always surprising. Like he's not instantly enamored and thinking that you are the most amazing magical thing. You have to earn it. He's like Hornsby in that regard. And so when he left, I was like, oh no, I, I kind of miss him. I kind of miss him. But you know, he had a couple of months on Lagum, so I'm not I'm not feeling too upset about that. But I'm really happy that we have Stella. That's great. So not only did we get a really good villager, we have a message in the bottle in three, two, one, Lobo, a standard umbrella stand. Thank you. We have a pretty good haul from the four tickets. I, as I said, I have been prioritizing the, the rocks instead of trees since we we're pretty good with that. And I can continue that with my, uh, with my own island, but let's bring up the number generator and we are going on a nine ticket hunt. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have like a quick montage of really all the villagers that we're going to see and then we can do a, a Q&A. So let's see uh, who we find on each of these islands, shall we? Seriously, this rain, this, I, I mean, it's, I guess it's better than being on my island because there were instances where it was raining a lot. Okay, let's just pull off the band-aid. We're not going to see them. We have Benedict. And no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, that's what I figured that this this hunt was going to be about. Mm -hmm. Island number two, we have is that Twiggy. Fun. Island number three, we have the same island, and it is. <gasps> Our girl, Patty, no, Patty, please be on ticket number nine. Please be on ticket number nine. I want you back. I feel so bad that I yeeted you to the sun. Please, please come back. Okay, okay, I didn't mean it. I did not mean it. To put a bandage on the open wound of my heart, we did get a message in the bottle by Jacob, a wooden symbol bed, which we already know. Jacob, you're dead to me. We're at ticket number four with another bamboo. Seriously, this this save really wants me to use bamboo. And we have J John Travolta. Hi, how are you doing? Ticket number five and we have Twiggy again. OK, that's our first repeat of the hunt, which is really interesting. I would not be against Twiggy, but honestly, I want Patty back. Yeah, no. Justice for Patty, bring her back. Who's on ticket number six? We have um, um, a lion. Who is this? Oh, it's Rex. Okay, I think it's Rex, right? Wait, is this Money Rock? Is this Money Rock? It's not. And we have Ozzy, who is okay. We do, however, have a message in the bottle. So who is going to send us something? Gwen? A pawn stone, Gwen, you queen. And the eighth villager that I am not taking is Murder Goat. Hello, Sherb. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? Could you imagine? We are officially on the have to take villager ticket. And so I figured we would use this time to answer the question from Diesel Frog. What is the most important thing you learned while streaming? I don't know if that question revolves around like about streaming or you know becoming a streamer so i'm just going to take it at that value but the major lesson that i've learned about streaming is to 
go at it your own pace to recognize that success is going to look different for for everybody and i would probably say that you really should make this about you i mean there's there's the whole egotistical making it about you that's probably not great but you know this is your space that you are curating and i think when i got into streaming i was having to try on different hats before i settled on i didn't even do that on purpose i was having to really settle on who i was as a streamer like the persona that i i provide that's not to say that what you see on the computer is is not me it's the version that i hope is the representation of the best part of me it takes away a lot of the daily anxieties and the worries and the um the concerns and i strive to be a confident but also just an approachable person and there's a lot of people who have a very vibrant outgoing personality that oh it's a dragon oh my goodness this is the era that we are getting drago no way i have always wanted to have drago on an island and this is his era hello drago so i would say that if you want to get into streaming the first lesson is to oh i guess another major thing is understanding this uh this parasocial dynamics that you will you will create with a wide variety of people and so approaching it as a professional acquaintanceship with people is really helpful and also knowing that your viewers are going to know more about you than you will about them and so there is a there is an imbalance with one you having created this community but also people having this expectation because they know you so well that there's a friendship involved and it's really hard to navigate you know which are actually friendships and which ones are friendly acquaintanceships or uh, or just viewers. And I'm always incredibly grateful that people share their lives. I think that we are in such a social media immersed and just very saturated world that we tend to forget how how like back in the day we were not this public with private interactions. And one of my favorite things that I've seen recently on Twitter, it's like, you know, we have such a, a really skewed view of viewership with streaming because, I mean, can you imagine hosting 10 people in your house all the time or even five people or, you know, one person daily? And so, I mean, the, the notion of having dozens if not hundreds of people in my chat is is really you know overwhelming to think about but just if you are growing a community and taking your time it's like you have five people that don't know you who want to spend time with you and that's pretty cool that you've created a space for strangers to just unwind and relax and enjoy the chaos of whatever it is you're doing so getting into streaming can be very difficult because you will compare yourself all the time to other content creators that you admire. And it's really easy to fall into the habit of wishing that you had it too. But wait, did I, I did ask him, right? I did ask him, hold on. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure that I asked. I am, I'm pretty sure that I did, but just to make sure because i don't want to be a cheater mccheaterson so that's the lesson it's just have realistic expectations and boundaries to whatever you're doing there is a false dichotomy with online interactions and in-person interactions so okay so so he's he's coming to the island okay we're good so just don't worry about it the numbers really don't matter it's all about just providing what brings you the most joy to a larger audience. Okay, we're going to do a quick drop off of things and then we'll do the final number generator for this hunt. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, the, the nine tickets was a bit much for me. 
So if it's anything over seven, I'm gonna re-roll, okay? Okay, all right. And the last ticket for, I think we're searching for the Peppy now. We are going on a five ticket hunt. Love that. That's not bad. So in total, we've gone on 18 islands and the halls that we have for the 18 islands has not been, not been bad. So Patty, please be on ticket five. All that's left is searching for the Peppy now. So we have Stella, we have Drago. Now, which Peppy would I like to have? Which Peppy would I like to have? I want, I honestly, justice for Patty. All Patty vibes. I would also like to get Freckles back. Who else? I'm, I'm just like, I'm drawing a blank, y'all. Like whenever I go hunting, I just, I'm all, I'm all for the vibes. It doesn't really matter because we're not taking the the villagers in the the first the first four but it would also be hilarious if we got truffles again for the third time that would be fun she doesn't stay for long on my islands for some reason i think she just like she is out to be a pop star whether you like it or not our sister fruits oranges that's cool that's awesome i think we grabbed oranges but um this this is great this is good to know this is good to know we're going to try to be quick because I have been out this, friends, for an hour and a half and um, I'm tired and I, I've got to, like, go do stuff. My first week of learning coding and Korean and working on art commissions instead of pixel art because I need to prioritize that. But it's been really nice to have a, a schedule. I've been really appreciating knowing what I'm going to do in puddles. No way. I like puddles. I like puddles. She's so cute. I think she was also, I think she was Yanoya's Peppy. It was either that or Flora. I don't, I don't remember, but I do know that she was on the island for a while. I liked Puddles a lot. She was cute. And island number two, we have Winnie. Oh my gosh, man. All of the old villagers are just coming back to haunt me. Winnie was the, the Peppy that I got with Old Port. That was the first island on this switch so that's really neat on ticket three we have puddles again okay so maybe puddles is going to be our our peppy she really wants to be here her and twiggy oh my goodness and we do have a message in the bottle in three two one flow an iron door plate awesome thanks flow on ticket four, we have our girl, Cherry. Cherry. She's okay. All right, friends, this is the last ticket for the Peppy. We are going to take medicine for my poor eye to make the best impression possible. And hopefully, hopefully, just Peppy vibes. Peppy vibes. Like, the best Peppy that we can think of, which is Patty right now. I would love to have Patty. So please, Patty vibes. Patty vibes. Patty vibes. And here we are with the last ticket. We don't know who it is, but I figured this would be a great time to answer the last couple of questions. Um, we have Demo from the Future who asks, Artsy, what is your favorite top three games of all time? Oh, that's so hard. That's so hard. I mean, by the sheer amount of hours that I've put into Animal Crossing, if we're going to talk about, like, video games, I think that Animal Crossing is probably a top three, if not my favorite. Um, oh, that's really hard because there's a lot of games that I've appreciated in the moment and it's been, like, my favorite game. But I think right now the video games that have been really calling to me are Animal Crossing, Slay the Spire, and uh wait who is that oh. is that a mouse is that a mouse it's anna Cotty. oh my gosh i had this girl on my animal crossing population growing island that i abandoned she's here for revenge oh my gosh and i think the last one it's probably stardew valley mostly because it was the introduction to like me playing games by myself a lot of the introductions to video games it was played with my husband so i did like guild wars 2 we did uh final fantasy i think it was 
10 together. That's the that's what was in, that's how I was introduced to the Final Fantasy series. I think that Stardew Valley was kind of like that gateway game, right? Where it really introduced me to mechanics and seeing what people have done with the farming sim and transformed it into something else. Like Cult of the Lamb is a what is it? A rogue light uh, game that has, you know, build your own cult. Um, there's a lot of different mechanics that I've appreciated that Stardew Valley had inspired in a lot of people. And if we're talking about board games, I would probably say Gloomhaven because that was my introduction to really playing board games regularly in 2020 in lockdown. Uh, Star Realms, which is another deck building game that if you buy the um, expansion packs, you can get, you can have, you can, it can be a, a collaborative gameplay. And then Cosmic Encounters, which is basically people who like playing Risk, but don't want to risk ending your friendships. So like, those are the three things that I highly recommend. And it's, it's great for first time players. And they're all sci-fi, I just realized. Also, another game that is a top beloved favorite is uh, The Crew. And The Crew is also, it's it's a card game where it's a lot like, like Rook and everything where you have to play certain tricks in a certain, uh, in a certain order and it gets progressively harder and more complex. And they also have one that's a, uh, an underwater one so I highly recommend those games. You can find them pretty much anywhere on Amazon. Uh, I know that Star Realms, when I bought it with the expansion packs, it was about 40 bucks, but I also had to pay for shipping. So it may be cheaper where you are. I'm pretty sure I invited Anacati, right? I did. So Anacati is okay. And it's really cool because all of, did I ever have Stella? Did I have Stella? Was Stella the Unoya? normal maybe no no it was not it was not was it no 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 right no i don't it's okay it doesn't matter but so friends we now officially have five villagers on the island i do need to do the quick input of the items but i i feel pretty good two of three is not bad and anacati is honestly just coming she's out for blood you know i played animal crossing population growing for what three seconds and she's like you know what you know what i'm, I'm coming i'm coming to you so stella's plot's done and this will be anacotti's and this will be drago i'm really excited for drago i have always wanted to have him on an island and it just didn't seem to be the opportune time, which, you know, it's kind of silly. You can really have any villager in any island. I still stand by the argument that any villager can fit a theme. And for no one has stumped me yet. So if you've made it this far, which bless you, uh, if you want to really test my capabilities of island themes and villagers, make it hard. Pick, pick a villager, pick a theme, and I'll make it work. Uh, Mori, hello, hello. How have things been going since we last spoke? Are you close to finishing the plots? Everything's done. Goodness, really? Thank you so much for all of your hard work. Now the rest is up to me. I vow to get this done quickly and get it done right. And if all goes well, we'll have someone in a new home as soon as tomorrow. By the way, I plan on letting the island know about the folks moving in or out during my island broadcasts. That's really exciting. That's it. Thank you. And ooh, what's the what's the appreciation? This is for you. What is it? What is it? <gasps> we got the fencing. Oh, that's so great. I have a feeling that within the 30 days, I'm not I'm not quite sure if we're going to have a fully decorated island, but we we can at least make the most of of what um of the time that we have. But we do have one final question and then i think maybe i'll info dump on conflict resolution another time because uh maybe maybe it'll be during a speed build or something that'll be really fun but uh dead light bulb attacker asks what do you consider important qualities in friendships and they said that they watched a video about it recently and would love to hear my opinions important qualities in friendships hmm i would probably say to not treat 
every friendship the same. I had to learn this the hard way that each person that you befriend will provide a certain level of energy and input to the friendship. And I think a great lesson that I've had to learn is to input the a similar amount because it becomes very frustrating when either you are putting so much energy into a relationship and it's not being met and i think a great lesson to not be frustrated is just like you know apply the same energy and see how it feels and sometimes people just don't have the energy to provide that you know this this increased level of intimacy but also know that every single person that you meet is not an extension of yourself. They are completely different people, not only from you, but from everyone else. And different friendships are really fun to appreciate as is, you know, like don't don't provide the same expectations aside from, you know, common decency, courtesy, honesty and um you know, just human compassion for across the board, but, you know, really experience and experiment with what these friendships bring to your life. I would also say that a big struggle that I have for me is how do you confront friends that have hurt your feelings? Because um, I grew up thinking that if there was any sort of disagreement or argument with friends and with partners that, you know, the relationship was basically over. There was like there was nothing that could be done to make it better. And what I will also say in any relationship is you need to find people around you that know how to argue well. And that's not arguing in the sense of who is right and who is wrong, but coming at a an issue as something to problem solve together as opposed to a make wrong do we need anything else no i probably shouldn't be spending my money just yet except for you know music where i still cannot play anything there's so much that you can do during this day in particular but i do want to make sure that i check for nook's cranny and off camera because i've been at this for nearly two hours and i am tired but uh we will talk to our our boy our friend blathers and welcome to the island we'll take the photos we will get mad science equipment i'm sure we're going to need that actually we probably will need that because of the the theme of you know solar punk and everything so we can do that and we we always need a piano bench obviously Friends, this, this hunt took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I honestly should have probably done five ticket hunts instead. But, you know, we have some really cool villagers. We have Stella coming. I, I don't know the the order that they arrive, but we'll be getting Stella, Drago, and Anakati. And I'm just really excited to see where this goes. And between this recording and the next video, I'll be doing some cleaning up, some preparations, taking photos, interacting and talking with Blather, seeing if there's any NPC visiting, but probably not. And I'm going to leave you with the sentiment that I leave on every live stream and video that I hope you're being kind to yourself and being kind to others and making art and playing games and encouraging others to do the same. Tomorrow, I think it's just saying hello to the, the the new resident and grinding for resources and just having a really fun time. And with that, I'll catch you next time. Bye.